Hi, welcome to Happy Horror Time. I'm Tim Murdoch. And I'm Matt Emmert. And we're here today with one of the stars of Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth, and Warlock the Armageddon. She's also starred in a ton of TV shows from Nip Tuck to Californication to Gary Unmarried and Euphoria. Paula Marshall. Woo! I almost thought you were going to say Terry Farrell, but she's not here. <laughs> Terry Farrell, the character in it. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm, you know, it, what day is it? I don't know. Does it matter? I wake up every morning and I'm like, all right, I'll make tea, I guess. A little backstory. Um, So I met Paula way back in 2004 um, when her husband was guest starring on Joey. I was a security guard keeping the studio safe. And you were so sweet to me. And um, I just, I want to say thank you for being so nice that day and letting me um, be your Facebook friend. And and Paula's like, I have no idea who you are. (laughs) (laughs) I remember, I remember when, um, when Danny did uh, Joey, I knew Matt LeBlanc. We did um, a commercial when we were literally like 18 years old for Chicken Littles, for Kentucky Fried Chicken. Oh, and it was me, my friend Jules Ravel, who is a model, and um, Julie, this other girl, Julie, and Matt LeBlanc. And Matt was living in this crappy apartment building, and not really the Lower East Side, but like 17th or 18th Street. He didn't even have a phone in his room. It was so weird. Uh, and then you cut to, I was like, Joey, I mean, Matt, how are you? And he remembered <laughs> me. And um, yeah, it was, it was crazy. That was a long time ago. You're like, yes, we have yes, KFC, so. chicken nuggets. <laughs> yeah, you can, you, can, you can Google it. It's so charming. We're, oh totally, we're totally going to. Yeah, so, sure. you know, before we dive in, I just want to know, where are you from originally? And growing up, did you always, were you always interested in becoming an actor? Uh, I lived, I grew up in Rockville, Maryland. And uh, my mom showed me this weird piece of paper thing that we did at school. It was like one of those um, portrait things where your face was all black and then it was just white. So it was just a thing. And it said on there, my name is Paula. I have brothers, sisters. I don't have any pets. My mom wouldn't let me. And I don't let my daughter either. It just carries on. I know I'm bad. I'm a bad mother. <laughs> but As I my cat write, runs by. <laughs> I, I did write in there that I wanted to be an actor. And I had no idea um, back then um, that that could happen. I moved to New York city to model and really (laughs) I wanted to be, I really love photography so much. And it was kind of an easy in. I assisted for this guy named Ruben Afanador who is now this big famous photographer. And um, that just kind of got me in the door. And then the next thing, you know, I meet a manager and she said, I think you could really be an actress. I think you're much more interesting in person than you are on paper which I thought was a weird, <laughs> underhanded, weird compliment that I took and I ran with it. So that's kind of how Wow. It yeah. That's, it. that's cool though. That's I mean, awesome. I, well, I guess it's like, yeah, well, whatever. It's a compliment, you know, in a, in a different <laughs> okay. sort of way. You're like, uh, okay, <laughs> okay, thanks. Well, yeah. so, so then when you get to, because I know Hellraiser 3 was early in your career, but how did you first hear about the audition for it? And what was the whole process like auditioning for that? I think anytime you get any audition, you... You just, where is it that we didn't have cell phones back then, Um, but I did have a pager. And um, so I think we would have to, we'd have computers back then. I can't believe how I'm dating myself, how old I feel. (laughs) But nowadays you get a script or sides on your computer, like in, in seconds. I would, I remember I'd either be on the subway or the bus and I'd check my pager to make sure on my hip that I didn't have to go pick up anything. And then you'd get down town to where I lived on 15th street. And then you'd get a buzz and you'd be like, oh, I gotta go uptown again. You'd, you know, it's you'd star go, 911, 911. <laughs> you know, you go back and then you pick up the script. So um, it was my first movie I've ever done. I remember um, the audition was somewhere like on, in, 42nd street somewhere up there you know, the busy part of town and i met tony anthony hickox mm-hmm. that's all i really really remember did you go somewhere- back and watch the first hellraiser and hellraiser 2 for um duh yeah <laughs> <laughs> of course i did 
Um, I, th I think I had seen one, but I didn't see two. Um, I think that girl's name is Ashley. Is that? Yes. Uh huh. She was great. Like, you know, it's not easy to do some of that stuff they ask you to do in these movies. Um, I thought she was really good. Uh, so this was this was different than that, but uh, I didn't care. I was like, it's a movie. Um, and and when I got it, I was super excited. You know. My yeah. First thing. And that's what I was going to ask. Were you because, you know, uh, were you psyched that your first role was in a horror movie? Were you a fan of the genre beforehand or was it just like, hey, it's a part I'm excited about? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I didn't care. I'd do anything. I would do anything <laughs> for a dollar. It's sad. My mom, when I moved to New York City, she literally said, don't become a prostitute. <laughs> and I, I said that my mom passed away a couple of years ago and I said that at her memoriam. A memorial service i literally told this story and there's like my brother going what are you doing why are you telling the story about mom not wanting you to become a prostitute and i'm like because that's who she was she was honest um yeah. i did not become a prostitute an actor second second best <laughs> yeah. right underneath there because i will do almost anything for a dollar um and uh but but it was just kind of exciting that almost any time, unless you're like super famous, you read for something, you audition, and they call and they go, they want you. I'm like, such oh. a good feeling. It's such a good feeling. It's, I mean, I don't care what it is, anything. Um, like the Nip Tuck thing, I remember auditioning for that. And uh, as I, I read, um, he really liked me. And I forget his name, I'm blanking. Ryan uh, Murphy? Thank you. So Ryan, <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me, cut that out. <laughs> he's, a, he's, he's our a, top always, listener. He's just always so you know. calling in. You never know. But he literally came to me and said, um, like I left the audition and then my agent called. They said, Ryan wants to talk to you. So I go back and they go, well, Ryan wants to know if you're okay doing some certain things in, in the show. I'm like, like what? He's like, you know, shitting in a hot tub. And I'm like, <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm sorry, I can't do it. So he's like, no, come on, Paula, please. I'm like, no, I'm too vain. I'm pretty and I don't want to do it. So um, anyway, I did it anyway. Money. Anyway, I carry saying, on. Oh, I had that as a question further on about the nip tuck scene, but <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, we'll cut to that. We'll, anyway, we'll cut to that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I was, well, I, again, I was just excited that someone booked me for a movie. I mean, it was a movie. It wasn't a commercial. It wasn't a soap opera. It was a movie. It got a and, theatrical release. It was yeah, a big movie. And truthfully, right? this yeah. is going to sound like I'm just kissing your ass, but it's actually the truth. Um, Terry was actually my favorite character in Hellraiser 3. Like, I thought you played her as just a very, like, kind of sympathetic person who was just kind of lost, you know? Like, she'd had shitty boyfriends and probably a shitty past, but she was a really sympathetic um character, and she was my favorite character in the movie. Oh. And that's... um. You know, to you. So, what? How did you feel about the the role? Like when you first? I mean, obviously you were excited to get the role, but how did you feel about the character of Terry? Is there anything you did to prepare or to approach playing her, other than watching Hellraiser one? Well, I tr I opened a, a package of cigarettes, which I had never done before, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm hitting. And I asked any friend I had, how do you smoke? And because I didn't want to look like a bad smoker, but then I thought, hey, what if she's a bad smoker? What if she's just trying it to look cool and so she's not good at it so i went with that because i couldn't practice smoking i hated it i still hate it um if Damn. i ever have to do it it's gross and it wasn't real cigarettes but um i had to dye my hair black like oh. very, like whatever goth for that time jet black and a jet black and i'd never done that before <laughs> and i remember um waking up in the morning without any makeup on with jet black hair bitch you i look like a crack whore that just came out of like you know some bad neighborhood in long beach That's hilarious. So, so you really have to wear a lot of makeup when you mm -hmm. have that black hair because like it's so unforgiving so um i dab my hair uh i i watched hellraiser and then um that was just kind of it i i kind of dove deep in to the script and and try to figure out how one makes a movie. Um, and I really paid attention to things like the continuity, which I never really had to worry about. And the mm -hmm. script supervisor, Hillary, um, Hillary, I forget her last name. She taught me so much about 
knowing, matching, eating. They got to do it at the same time, leaning on things. So I really like took this opportunity for this movie to learn how a movie is made and yeah, really learned cool. and paid attention. So. so it was a good kind of learning experience. It then. really was. The, the, yeah. You know, also one of the things that we have to mention, one of the coolest aspects of Terry's character is her wardrobe. Yeah. Did you like, get to she, pick it? Yeah. Well, she's, um, everything is bedazzled. Everything is sparkly. That's the thing. Were those your clothes or did um, you? Get... No, let me tell you, <laughs> I still have them in the garage. Really? I swear to God, I don't know why I'm not a hoarder, but I thought this character was one I never wanted to forget. And so I kept the, the jeans they made me were custom weird because I guess they couldn't find these weird bell bottom tight jeans. So they custom made those. I still have a rip in the ass from when <laughs> um, um, uh, Kevin Bernhardt grabbed me and dragged me down the stairs. They ripped on like this thing. I still oh. have that. The, dazzled vest it was like that shiny vest thing i still have um and maybe like one other thing but i thought that was kind of the main outfit yeah. for Harry. no yeah. i mean they're such great outfits like when you're yeah. it's just, that's what Pull i was thinking out for I was like, halloween yeah i know i mean that's oh, the I, thing. Have, I just thought of a really funny um thing that i have to bring up because i will forget um when i got the job on euphoria I read, and it was not much. I, I have a very small role in this amazing TV show. And uh, I am like, when I, I read for it, I said, do you want me to do like anything else? Is there, should I, I could dance for you? She's like, no, no, we love you, whatever. I end up shooting the pilot and I was talking to the director, writer, and he goes, I said, why did you hire me? Like, I, I, you know, you really could have gotten anybody to do this. Like, what? I'm so happy I'm doing it, but what was it? And he goes, I fell in love with you in a movie called Hellraiser. And I'm oh. like, what? <laughs> really? And he goes, oh, yeah. And, and I'm like, well, here you go. <laughs> See, I'm telling you, Terry has a following. The character has with Terry so, has a following. It's so strange. So, that's no, that, that is I mean, awesome. And, I, I, when I, when I was working security and I walked in, I did a gay gasp. I was like, <gasps> <laughs> wait, can you do that again? Too? <gasps> There's nothing like a gay gasp. There's nothing like a gay gasp. I, you know, it happened. So, so I have a, a, a plot question with Terry's development, okay. which, so watching, watching hours or three. So first off, what's the, one of the best parts is when Terry goes back to her ex-boyfriend, you know, Monroe's club, and he tries to basically feed her to Pinhead. And then she kind of turns <laughs> the ties and then punches him with those like, um, what is it like? Ever. Like it's knuckle ever. things. Yeah. Knuckle but, thing. oh, but so she feeds him basically to Pinhead. But then, yeah. then, so we don't see her again until the end and she is a Cenobite. And I guess, so are we just to assume like Pinhead lured her into becoming a demon with like the promises of hell? Because we just don't see anything. Yeah, I guess that you leave, maybe that was supposed to be for the next, you know, movie. I don't know. But uh, yeah, it was weird how they just kind of ended with him doing this, to, you know, Terry. Mm -hmm. And the me like with my lollipop or whatever. I always had a lollipop. <laughs> um, and being like crying and, and looking. And then, yeah, yeah I guess it was just a. I was like, maybe it's the sad. scene was cut. I well, I was sad because again. No, there wasn't anything. There wasn't like a thing. It was just like cut to. Now I'm part of them. But well, was, that's the thing. I was I, just like like the QAnon people. They're missing clearly something in their lives that they need to be part of something. So maybe Terry needed to be part of something called yeah. the Pinhead. Oh, here it is. Terry was a QAnon supporter. That's <laughs> where you here to hear. No, it was just sucks because I was. We were all. I think most people are rooting for, her and then it's suddenly like, oh, it's like almost like she went to the dark side, you know. Well, yeah, well. Speaking like of that, yeah. what was it like getting into all the Cenobite makeup? What kind of a process was that? Oh my God. Okay, so it was at least two hours, and again, we didn't have cell phones back then, so I couldn't kind of like maybe we had a little beepers. Thing. Music, huh? <laughs> know, but like to you know pass the time you, you have a book or a magazine so you just sit there mostly with your eyes closed it was gross um <laughs> it, to look at yourself again i'm very vain so to see myself like that as you know 
it was only a little part of the movie. I thought most of the movie I looked gorgeous. So to oh, be gorgeous, scary, yes. gorgeous. Um, <laughs> so it was weird. The odd thing, taking the makeup off took like an hour and 15 minutes because it's all like glued on and they can't just rip it off. So they have to take like a, um, a brush, a makeup brush, and then dip it in this nasty ass stuff. And then they slowly peel it off. So you're in the makeup chair, like it's 1.30 in the morning, you know, try to get this shit off my face. And then, uh, you know, it, it's just, your face feels like beaten up. My friend, Michael Chiklis had to do this day in and day out on this movie, The Hulk, I think he was in. Oh, yeah. And he was like, Paula, someone needed to like massage my hands. I needed like Zen calm music in my, because he's like, he was claustrophobic and I too am claustrophobic. I wasn't back then. But so now I don't know, man. It's too much. So you're not going to be dressing up as the Cenobite this Halloween, I take it. No. No, ever again. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I also read that you played the character of Sandy after she was skinned by Pinhead or that you put on all the makeup. So Sandy, I was like the, the girl, I think she's having sex with Monroe and then she gets, um, to, but it's like you're credited as putting on the makeup for Sandy after she was skinned alive. Is that true? <laughs> no, what? I didn't I know it was so random. I had to ask, but it's like, I was like, wow, why would they get someone else to do that? But you're credited with that. So <laughs> the makeup for the girl that you stood in. So what happened, you know, so Sandy gets like skinned alive. It's a pretty oh, right. the girl, movie. the blonde girl, blonde girl. Yeah. 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 And then they say that you played her as the skinned alive person. <laughs> I don't remember that. But... I, I, Hey, it totally, I know. <laughs> so, so I was like, Hey, hey. No, we can no, no, it's so funny, but like that. But my favorite scene in the whole um, movie is when Pinhead comes to life in the club, and he basically massacres all those people. And you're not actually in that scene. Were you but, there on set that day, or of did you course, because house? of course, Brent Boldhouse. Who do you know who Brent is? He's like this big party promoter dude. So, <laughs> but before he was, I guess he was friends with Tony, and so he kind of flew in to be part of the movie he was the um the bartender but brent was like a big wig party guy here party promoter in hollywood like when you think of like roxbury i don't know maybe it was roxbury where he was but he was like a big deal um i think tony kind of had a few of his friends kind of come in for that big party scene it was you know a lot of the local extras yeah and um uh yeah it was kind of crazy but i was there i was definitely there i think but there was a little scene where I was at the bar, but it was oh. after that. I think it was the same kind of scene just later on. I don't think I was there when they were all kind of going crazy. I had already been wrapped. W was there, was there a, there. did that take a long time? Because like, it's like literally like Carrie, like it's like at the prom, yeah. everyone is getting killed it's and so massacred. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, th those kind of things take a long time, but it's not like Titanic when you gotta, you know, <laughs> clean, dry everybody off when the boat goes. My husband, Danny, who's in Titanic, he literally said it would be like five hours later. Okay, everybody, let's do this again. So you got, you want to do it in, in one or two. One yeah. or two, yeah. Um, James Cameron I can has months and months and months to do this, but, you know, a little horror movie. You just, if it's good enough, it's good enough. <laughs> you're like, if you're going to take a CD to the head, it's got to look good yeah. on that first. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I also read, just because we're clearing up all these misinformation, this could definitely yeah. be misinformation, that there uh -huh. was a, it's quoted, healthy rivalry between you and and um, Terry Farrell, who plays Joey <laughs> during filming. <laughs> is that true or is that just Hollywood gossip? Clear that up for us. <laughs> you know what? I think, I don't know. I, I, I liked Terry. Carrie and I actually were fine. I think I almost like looked up to her because she was kind of like a big model then. And I was like a nobody. Um, and Terry, I believe was dating Tony. So I think they were seeing each other. Um, maybe I could be wrong about that. Um, but no, I don't. I mean, she was fine. I kind of looked up to her and I was like the, the new kid. And I mean, maybe she didn't like me. I was fine with her. But so there was never any like, uh, I was too young and naive and wanted to learn. And so I would never, I'm like the nice person on the set. I'm the one that like, I bake cookies or I make homemade salsa or I take portraits of everyone and put it on the wall. So everyone learns everyone's names. I did that on Gary Unmarried that I took because I love photography. I took portraits of everyone and they put little stickers. If you were like a makeup, you had a little sticker of a lipstick or oh, if you were that. a DP, you'd have like a flashlight next to your face. 
Anyway, I'm the nice one. I'm never the bitchy one. Look, well, let's hey, bring Terry I'm out and discuss it. Just Terry, kidding. What if Terry. we have a special guest, <laughs> Terry Farrell, as we surprise Terry. you? <laughs> no, I, again, I don't, I don't think so. I think yeah. she was just finding her own, but you know, she was, she was nice enough to me. Yeah. We had, mm -hmm. we really had no problems. No, that's so cool. what you're telling me is the internet posts things that aren't true. <laughs> Maybe. Yes. So yes. An another person to ask about, obviously, uh, Doug Bradley, who's played pinhead through like eight yeah. Hellraiser movies and has yeah. become basically a horror icon. What was he like to work with? Like, what was he like out of that character? <laughs> you know, you would never in a million years, he, he was just very normal and I didn't do much with him, you know, unless he was in that big box, which was weird. Um, and he wouldn't just sit there waiting for his, um, you know, his, the, them to turn around on him. He was gone, you know, smoking a cigarette somewhere. So we didn't do that much, uh, together, but, um, he was a lovely, he was a, you know, an English gentleman and, but we didn't get, we didn't really hang that much. Um, yeah. so Very was sweet. there, um, uh, like a red carpet premiere, a cast and crew screening or? You yeah, know, when everything was um, again, um, <laughs> trying to remember, uh, I'm sure there must've been some kind of, um, thing. I was in New York then. Uh, but did you steal one of Terry's outfits to wear on the red carpet? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> um, it's really, it's, by the way, it's can, probably confusing for listeners because because your yeah, her name is character's Terry. name is Terry. Yeah. And then the actress who played Joey, the other lead girl is named Terry in real life. So and your husband saying, was on Joey. Yeah. So Terry confused jo me. Yeah. A lot of names. Mixing yeah, so, yes, but that's, you meant Terry, her character. Yes, yes, I yes, first yes, thought yes. maybe you stole Terry, the actress. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. But Terry, Terry, let's, let's not forget. Terry Farrell was like kind of a big name model. Again, yeah. I, she's gorgeous. And, mm -hmm. and then cut to, she ends up marrying this guy that guest starred on a TV show of mine named Cupid. It, it was just a weirdest, uh, you know, the, the six degrees are always happening. Um, did you guys catch up then? Did you see each other when that like- No, I don't think I ever did. I think she like moved back East and then I never did. But I, back to the the screening, I, I don't know about the big Hollywood screening. I ended up seeing as it was my first big movie. I rented out a theater where I'm from. Um, uh, in the, it wasn't the White Flint Mall. It was like Gaithers, in Gaithersburg, Maryland, some mall there. And I rented out the whole theater and like the local news guy came and he interviewed me and all my friends from high school came and like even my old teachers came. It what? was so fun. And That's then, awesome. yeah. And then we went to like some bar afterwards and um, uh, like called Champions maybe. Oh, I remember yeah. Champions. Champ right, I mean, it was something or some one of those local bars in a mall that had terrible food but we would all party there and it was it was really kind of fun I think I made out with this guy Rob Ulysses in the picture thing anyway wow stuff you do that was um, much better than a red carpet I, I, premiere. I was going to say, I think yeah. this is the best screening story because yeah. we always ask people like, oh, what was it like the first time you saw it? But like renting out, having all, that's probably the best way yeah. to see a movie that you were in, you know? It was all, everyone's loving on me. Um, and uh. my parent, you know, my mom would be like, well, your hair was really dark because she used to be a hairdresser. That's all she comments in my hair. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so I can't really remember the big screening except my little screening. Which no, that is great. That's great. So, okay. So we go a year after, uh, Hellraiser three, you start in another horror movie that just happened to be directed also by Anthony Hickox, um, Warlock Armageddon, which was the sequel to the original Warlock. And I guess, well, how did you get involved with Warlock or did the director since after Hellraiser three, did he specifically come to yeah, you and say, I, I, I'm pretty sure I just got it. I don't think I read for it, but I could be wrong. Um, it was, you know, once you like meet someone, I'm sure directors are like, oh, she's great. She's easy. She's <laughs> not a diva. Hire her. Like, yeah. I'm, it's just kind of, I would do that. When you know yeah. people are easy to work with, you should keep hiring them because um, there's so many who aren't easy to work with. Uh, so yeah, I think I feel like I just got it or, or maybe I got this other one with um, Patsy Kensett. It was some other thing where I played with Mario Van Peebles. I don't even know what that was called. Um, oh. <laughs> I think Tony directed that one too. So, you know, I think he just liked me and he thought I was good enough and uh, a good kid. And so, yeah, yeah but, but yeah. 
Did you do any research? Um, did you go back and see Warlock One? <laughs> of course I did. I have that's, that's just what that's the least I could do. Yeah. Um, no, no that's and did you went so you're playing this role, Samantha, and she's kind of like this druid warrior with um telepathic powers. Did you was there any preparation you did specifically <laughs> for that? It's very different than the role on Hellraiser. True. Sure. I think I just ate some mushrooms or something. Yeah. Oh, I didn't do that. Um <laughs> No, I don't think I did. That was just kind of like, I'm a kid from, no, I didn't. I don't think I did. It was just Chris. It was me, Chris Young. Who else? Who else was in uh, there? Julian Sands. Yeah. Julian. Julian was a doll. I love Julian. And why are there always English people? I mean. It was like an English and they're always the bad guys. I was so excited. To, I was working at a movie theater at the time. And when <laughs> Dude, the poster came out. I ran right up to the projection booth and I was so excited. And just he, the, he did a gay gas. I did another gay gas. But <laughs> I was so excited. I was like, oh, there's the girl from Hellraiser 3. I was just so excited. I was, you know, because the movie's so special effects. And, and, you know, it wasn't like CGI. It was like, you guys are. Tell you, they, they made us do everything. I remember it, it feels like there aren't any, any uh, stunt people. Sometimes you feel like you're just doing it. They're like, can you do it? Sure, I'll try. <laughs> Remember that scene? It was with, I was like tied to a car. Yeah. Yes, oh, the end, the end. Car. And there was a big, big uh, fan and dirt. It took, I think maybe 20 minutes after it to get my eyes back open because there was so much dirt. And so there was the medic guy Thank God we had a medic just dripping water to, you know, the eye drops to get all this stuff. Sometimes it's just not fun. Yeah. Um, but, and, but, you know, just I. I was actually going to ask you about that scene because, so that scene is like total chaos. You know, you're like tied up. Chris Young is like against a tree. There's daggers flying back and forth, like tree and stuff. But the, what I thought was the funniest, and who knows, maybe I'm wrong about this, but like you guys are doing all this druid telepathic fighting and then you turn the headlights of a truck on and suddenly that kills the warlock. So are we supposed to think it was just electricity? The whole time? <laughs> <laughs> That's I mean, right. So this, is, this is fresh in our minds because we all yeah. watched, we watched everything. I it, guess. It, yeah, no, it was just so funny because you guys have this intense battle and then literally it's like you turn headlights on and he's like ah like the witch like in the wizard of oz i mean it was the 90s i think <laughs> it was more back then not today i mean when you watch a, a movie i what did i watch with my daughter um the matrix and you go now back in the day like this shit was just unbelievable and you wonder if certain things if they if it holds up um but yeah i mean i don't know the it is but i mean well, speaking of Julian Sands, you said he was a so yeah. What, oh yeah, um, what was Julian Sands like? Yeah, like and because he plays such like this dark evil figure. I mean, he's really good in that role. And he's naked. Yeah, and he's very <laughs> naked in the naked with the yeah. hair. He had the most beautiful hair. He Julian was again kind of like Doug. We didn't like hang out. I was like the kid. He was probably just the movie star and on the set, but he was cool and laid back and and nice and easygoing and um. I think he talked a lot about soccer, which I didn't understand because I only watch American football. Um, mm-hmm. But he's he he was you know cool. I don't have any fun stories about him though. No, I, think I, mean, I probably have a picture or two because I brought my camera. I have a lot of. I actually tried to get pull out in my hoarded garage um, my script. I keep scripts from everything, That's and I awesome. took a lot of photos of along the way of things. Oh, but, we would uh, love to oh see those. Gosh. I think there's tons of bands we'd love to yeah. see those. Like, yeah. I'll, to... I'll see if I can't scan some and then I'll email them to you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that would be awesome. You know, so overall, like, what, was it fun to play like this tough character who ends up kicking a lot of ass? And if it, because I mean, she, you know, in horror movies, let's be honest, most people don't survive <laughs> horror movies. And you got to play someone who was a survivor and like a tough warrior. Did, did you really enjoy it? It almost that? looked like you were protecting Chris Young. <laughs> yeah, in a way. Um, I, you know what? Uh, I, I never really thought of it like that. Even when I see movies now, like Wonder Woman, the stuff when, from start to finish, all the things you're doing are so corny in the moment. They're dumb. <laughs> and you can't even believe that someone like an actor can can fake it enough to make it look real. So um, again, it's just you just hope you get in a few takes so you don't laugh like me in the hot tub and on Nip Tuck. I mean, if you, <laughs> we're if almost you there. We're almost that, there. 
You close in on that, you see me look away and I'm laughing. That is amazing. And we're almost there because I definitely do it. I was um, just going to say um, for after Warlock was done, since you did survive, was there ever talk of like bringing you back for Warlock 3? Did you ever hear about no. it? For fuck's sake, no. I don't know There why. is a Warlock 3. There is? And they didn't, but here's the thing. They didn't even bring Julian Sands back. They recast the Warlock, which is nuts. Oh, did Chris Young do it? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. <laughs> <laughs> like, so. So they got rid of the warlock and the two warriors. And I think they just took a, what do they call it? We went in a different direction. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, that sucks. Dude, would you have been up for it if they had said like, hey, do you want to do warlock three? Yeah. Money. Oh, oh. <laughs> you're well, like, how much? I mean, how much? Um, I, I don't know what I did right after that. Again, it, when you're young and you're starting out, it's it's all about getting another thing on your resume i don't care what it is your resume is huge by the way good job yeah. <laughs> i you know looking back on both hellraiser and uh, warlock what like what impact have these movies had on your career because obviously you went on to so many different things but what kind of impact has have these two movies had on your career well i, I think hellraiser had the most because it was my first and like i said before i learned so much i was so responsible it was my first time kind of away. I, um, we shot it in High Point, North Carolina. And Larry um, Mortoff, who was the producer, he had his bike. And I brought my like racing bike. I used to do triathlons. Like people did drugs back in the day. I used to do triathlons. I wasn't good at it, but I did. Exactly the same. <laughs> um, uh, so I would ride my bike with Larry on the weekends when we weren't filming. Um, and I just kind of... Uh, took it all in. And with Hillary, the script supervisor, I was very just like thoughtful about matching. And, and anytime, even now, when I see a film where someone leans the wrong way or they're, you know, they do something, there's a, I think it's Robert De Niro in some creepy movie where he leans on a car and then- Cape Fear? To, maybe it was Cape Fear. Yeah, yeah, he I leans know. on the car and then he's talking to someone and then the next thing his hands there and then it goes back up and you're like oh no someone like the editor what i always wanted to do is make it the editing job easy so they can use the best take mm -hmm. and um so I, I thought it was my responsibility as an actor to do it uh, the same which is really hard because in the moment what again if it's not a one take like a one shot if it was one shot it's great you do anything you want anything moves you you do it but if you got coverage, you really have to match so that they don't have to, you know, again, I'm trying to make everyone's life easier with the editing process. Um, so I just think that that one will stay with me because I learned so much about mm -hmm. how to how to how to make a movie. In, you know? in both films, um, do you keep in contact with anyone from Hellraiser or, or uh, Warlock 2? No. Um, Kevin Bernhard had a huge crush on him. He um, he smelled so good. He's and hot. He's the one I think. Right? Monroe. Oh yeah. yeah, Monroe. Okay, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> he was married to Apollonia. Remember Apollonia Six from like Prince Prince days. Uh, I know Prince. Uh, okay. uh, <laughs> vaguely Prince. sounds from Apollonia was uh, a singer, and mm. um, she was married to Kevin and came down to the set to visit. And I remember her looking at my eyebrows because <laughs> she had very, very thin eyebrows. And she looked at mine and she goes, don't ever tweeze them. I go, what? She goes, look at mine. I tweezed them and they never grew back. And I still <laughs> have pretty big eyebrows. And um, I told my daughter that story because she has huge eyebrows, like, you know, Brooke Shields back in the day. Oh, yeah, it's uh -huh. Brooke Shields. Um, the Brooke Shields eyebrows. <laughs> um, so, but Kevin smelled so good. And he was a he was a great guy. Um, so I, I found out what his cologne was, <laughs> and I bought it. And I still, <laughs> I still have it upstairs. It's uh, it's on the little thing. I I forget what it's called now, but literally I can smell it. And I'm like, oh, it's Hellraiser. It's so whenever <laughs> oh, that is great. So whenever you feel like Hellraiser. reminiscing, you just spray some of the cologne. It's creepy. I mean, it's kind of creepy. Kevin is a writer, and I think I kind of ran into him. Um, but we didn't like stay friends or anything. And I hadn't, I haven't seen Terry in forever. Really. I mean, some, some people you meet on set and you click immediately and you remain friends. Um, I think that happened more with people on TV shows, ironically. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Um, so, have you ever done a horror convention? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I think someone has been trying to get me to do it, but um, I just I don't know. I always felt so weird about it. I, Matt and I, I would be first well, I will say this, and, and I'm not just saying this because we would love to have you in a horror convention, but most of the people we've talked to, they talk about how they don't, they never really realized how much fun a convention was till they finally did it. Like just because really? horror fans really, yeah, like, like horror fans are so dedicated and sweet. And again, I know it's they like are. we're trying to talk about it ourselves, but like so many people have said, wow, I never realized what an impact these films made until I got to meet these fans and they're just so sweet. And so, so, yeah. you know, you know, you may consider because I think a lot of people would just love to, to see you. <laughs> um, I always feel like I just, I wasn't um, uh, popular enough or in a big enough thing to do those things. Like I love fans and I love people. And, and so I, I, I appreciate that, but yeah, I don't know. It always felt odd to me. So, you know, one thing I forgot to ask when we were going through. So, uh, randomly, uh, Zach Galligan has a cameo in both Hellraiser 3 and Warlock 2. And I didn't know if, yeah, Zach Galligan, like as in Gremlins 1 and 2. And I don't know, did he know the director? Was he stalking you? Do you know about this? I I don't know. I would have to like Google or go and figure out. Uh uh. I don't remember that at all. (laughs) Apparently, so in Hellraiser, he's in the club, and in um, uh, what's it called? In Warlock, he like knocks on the door to the girl who gets killed first. But again, it was just so random that this guy who had been in these other big movies is was a cameo in both of your horror it, movies. It, it must have been Tony's friend because Tony uh was a really nice, fun guy, like party director, you know, Hollywood. He, uh, I'm sure he just had his friends who he could hire. Why not? Why wouldn't yeah. if like I was directing so if as long as you're good, I'd no, hire. No, friend. exactly. Why not? And yeah. also, you want to help your friends out, and why not exactly. do that kind of thing? You know, um, moving. I mean, obviously, our focus is these horror movies, but moving past. Since you've done so much TV, like you said, what would you say are like the two or three most memorable roles, or two or three favorite television shows that you've been on? Um, <laughs> I have a feeling we may know one. <laughs> Well, uh, well, my first one, my favorite one was um, Cupid. 100%. Yes. That was Rob Thomas who wrote that. It was uh, like every day, Jeremy Piven and I, and Jeremy gets a bad rap, but I, and I've said this many times, I've never been quite as good um, against any other actor than I was with him. Jeremy brought out the best in me because we, had this ability to, he's so good at improv. I had never really done improv before, um, but I guess I could do it because I, you know, I hit the ball back and Rob Thomas who wrote it was so willing to give us, the door was always open to add, there was always like, we would add a, a, you know, a a punch here and a thing there and the end a little, like we would just come up with these things and he would always use them and keep them. And he wasn't the guy who was on the set. We shot it in Chicago. He, Rob was mostly in LA writing and come back and forth, but Rob appreciated the magic that happens on set between actors. And so we would just see what happens. Um, Would certainly skip, uh, stick to the script, but when things happen, Anyway, uh, for sure. happy accident. No, that's great. That's great. Yeah, I would say that was one of my favorite things. Um, uh, Californication was mm. so cool. Yeah. Uh, I remember when it was just supposed to be one uh, episode. And then at the very end, I think it was almost the last day of filming was the sex scene where David threw up on the painting and um, you know, you're sitting there having fake sex and then you're like, they cut and you're like, you cover your boobs up. And then you're like, so did you see the, you know, the cowboy game on the weekend? (laughs) You talk about, or, you know, you just talk about stuff while you're waiting. So it's not awkward. (laughs) Literally it's like this. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, um, it was just so weird sorry if i'm like over exposing myself um, no, it's great. i got that it's, i met with the light um, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. so um uh, but so we're doing the scene and we're just about to turn around to go to pamela alden and natasha and everybody coming in and catching us uh-huh. if you're familiar with the scene um and I look at David and he's sitting there naked with the painting and he pukes. 
because like I, I were having sex and I push him off <laughs> and he goes up and grabs the painting because it fell off the wall. And then I look at him and I go, oh, Jesus, that fake puke is quite good. It's kind of making me sick. And he goes, you know, it'd be funny, a sympathy puke. And I go, oh, my God. I was like, oh, really? And so I raised my hand. I'm like, oh, can I, can I puke? Can I can puke I, too? <laughs> can I puke too? And then the writer goes, what are you talking about? And the director goes, no, Paula, no, we don't want girls. Mm -mm, that's Californication. The girl, the pretty girls basically don't puke. And I go, just give me one puke, just one. <laughs> and so, it was, so it's certainly David's um, idea. So before we turned the camera around, we were all finished. They gave me one take and maybe there were two cameras on it. And so we're like, okay, let's make sure this is good. And I think I remember I had put like my underwear back on, like my G-string, because mostly you're just, you're not wearing anything, but mm -hmm. you have little tiny things covering yourself up. But I think you can see that we forgot because we did it so quickly that I still had like a G-string on. Anyway, that's just fun information. <laughs> So we do the take and, and you have to kind of, you know, put the soup in your mouth. And then, so we did it. We told everyone, okay, we'll do this one take. Paula wants to puke, whatever. And then, so we do it. And then I ad lib this thing. They come in and then David, I puke. And then he's laughing and it almost looks like we broke in character. And then I said something like, we're just so high. I don't know what happened. And then they yelled <laughs> cut. And then David David Duchovny runs over to the director and says, and the writer and said, you got to give Paula the button. Don't, because it was supposed to be his. It's all good. He would, his character would say that a lot, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and he goes, give Paula the button, give her the button. And the writer says to me, he goes, you puke naked like that. You're coming back next season. I was like, oh, oh. oh thank you. You know, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> So that was, I would say that was one of my favorite uh, shows, oh, mostly because it was so kind of the beginning of like the cool, edgy TV shows. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Part of that. Um, and that was right before I was shooting that when I read for Gary Unmarried, another mm. one of my favorite uh -huh. shows. Mostly the writing was so spot on for me. They gave me, instead of just being the wife, you know, the stupid throw the ball up for Jay, they gave me funny stuff to do and they, I don't think they realized how funny I was until they got to know me. So they would give me more. And, um, and so that was really, I was really bummed that one was canceled. Um, yeah, no, those are good picks. You know, I love sitcoms. I love all, and I watched yours too. And you know, it's funny. Um, speaking of Gary unmarried. So us being horror people, of course, I yeah. noticed, looked back and noticed that, the girl who plays your daughter on Gary Unmarried is Catherine Newton, who ended up uh, just being in like the movie Freaky, which is like yes. a huge. Yes. What Catherine... was she like as such a like a kid like that? <laughs> oh, she was she was a sweetheart, um, and we still uh, communicate. I remember um, my daughter wants to be an actress. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a big fan then of, of promoting that. And uh, it's just hard. Um, and so Catherine, I think I, I had texted her about, Hey, do you have any acting teachers that I can hook her up with that you really loved? And, and then the next thing, you know, there was a pandemic. So there was no acting classes for my daughter last summer. Um, but Catherine was responsible and sweet and, and, and I, I had no idea, like, you never know what's going to happen. Like that one role, it leads you to this one. It couldn't happen to a nicer person. Oh, that's a doll. Yeah, no, she because she went into Big Little Lies and then this Freaky, yes. which we, we absolutely loved. Yeah. It was such like a fun horror kind of comedy with her. I feel like that could, could be like a, a breakout or is a breakout role for her, you yeah, know? She, so Yeah, she's great. I'm so happy for her. No, that's great. And yeah. then I saw that you were on recently on a couple episodes of 911, but and so was your husband. Did you guys oh. work? I don't know how they did that. Like they were like, oh, you guys need to have your health insurance this year. So we'll throw you on. Um, I don't know. My husband was playing a cop with Angela Bassett. Mm -hmm. I mean, like how fabulous is that? And he, and I remember he would come home and go, oh my God, she's like so great. It's so <laughs> cool to work with her. Um, I, I think they just kind of offered me the part of 
um, the, the one, the boy's mom, I forget even what his name is right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, isn't that weird that we're both on the same show? That's what I thought. I was like, wait, was it to get, cause I, I, <laughs> I don't watch that one. So I wasn't familiar with the show, but I saw you both yeah. had in their credits. I was like, I wonder, are they together or in it or no oh, it's so weird i just play someone's mom that's who i am now oh someone's <laughs> mom well i so getting back to nip tuck the one yeah. thing i got it so that i mean i uh, <laughs> loved nip tuck i love ryan murphy you know like a big fan of american horror story everything but you know so, that is such, <laughs> such a memorable role so, so, go ahead, go ahead. oh no i was just gonna say like well first off yeah i i, I wanted to know what filming that scene in the spa did what, ryan murphy have to pull you aside and be like this is what we're gonna do yeah, like he's that's what I told you. So when in the casting of it, I read and I remember it was like three scenes and there was a room full of people, like nine. Usually it's a casting director and like maybe a producer, but it was a lot of people because it was a recurring role. I got that. That's fine. So I had to cry in like two out of the three and I killed it. Like, you know, when you do a lot of comedies, a lot of casting people think, oh, she is can't be dramatic. I'm like, no, watch this. <laughs> um, so I remember just, I killed it. I was really good and really authentic. And, but you never think just like on Californication, you never think you really have to take your clothes off or you really have to do stuff. You're like, well, someone else will do that. You yeah. know, I don't do that. So when they liked me and again, I walked away and at this point I did have a cell phone because it was, you know, early 2000s or something. <laughs> um, he, I got a phone call and they said, Brian wants to talk to you. He asked to ask your question. And I did. I went back and I was like, what do you want to ask me? And he goes, so there's just some things that we have to make sure that you're comfortable with. And then I literally said to him, no, not, I can't do that. I'm sorry. Did I, he I, literally say, we're going to have your character have diarrhea in the spa? <laughs> <laughs> I have this one friend, Jeff Briller, who from the get go, like a dad at my kid's school, he will never let me live it down. He will always go, oh, so like in the hot tub. I'm like, really? Like, that's uh, Well, I was going to say, do you still get shit from fans? No pun intended. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, you know what? No, only Jeff Perler does. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but he, so he told me that. But again, you think, oh, I have to do that. It's going to be someone else. It's not really me. It's <laughs> So, you know, it's me in the hot tub. And, and then there's someone throws dirt in there. And then the sound effect. It was, but literally, you must watch because I laugh. And I'm like, that's it. it. I'm done. Because I'm, (laughs) and when you're a guest star, you really can't be that arrogant. But I was, I was like, I can't do this again. I can't, I'm laughing. Um, I just just remember my my sister in law called me and she goes, Make sure you watch Nip Tuck tonight. And I was like, setting my DVR. <laughs> and 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 he um he jumps out of the hot tub so fast. <laughs> I know. Do you know he like was staying uh, right down the street, and I saw him walking his dog. I was like, Yo, what up? He's like Paula. I'm like, hey, okay. like he just he does these memories, like flashbacks of that. Um, but then there was another scene where I had to have like the body, like a body cast of like. Cause I guess I was a fat person who lost all this weight and then had like saggy skin. Again, Ryan Murphy told me I was going to do that. And I'm like, why do you hate me so much? <laughs> why, why are you doing this? Um, but you know, when it's a recurring role, you kind of want to do it. And it, it was Ryan Murphy. This is yeah, and, and party was like big. He was yeah. as big as he was. Um, so I was, I felt fortunate enough to do it. But again, I like being pretty. So. It's but it's definitely memorable. And yeah. uh, Nip Tuck was a great show. Like it's just so funny. So we just have one final question for you. Yeah. And we have we ask every one of our interviews, and you've kind of already told us I mean, a lot of these. So I lot. feel like you don't even need to come up with this, but we do ask every one of our interviews. But okay. what is one thing you can tell us about your experience, either working on Hellraiser 3 or Warlock 2 or anything that you've never told any other interviewer or publication or podcast or anything? One, it could be a little secret. It could be something, even though I feel like you've already told yeah, us some secrets. Told us a lot. Yeah, I, I might have. I might have said. Uh, I would maybe have said that I had the huge crush on Kevin Bernhardt, and then I bought the perfume or his cologne, and then still have it. Like that's. I mean, I kind of feel like that is that's the secret. One. Like it's funny yeah. you you yeah. knew before we asked us. That yeah. is a great one. Yeah. I think. Like I, I would probably think that that that's the thing that stayed with me, and um. Yeah, or the Apollonia. No, but I think I've told a real story. But yeah, no, it's it's Kevin Bernhardt's cologne. 
I mean, it's a good one. And I, I like I, that. I also tell you what it is. I'm going to email you later and oh, yeah. tell you what it is. It's fantastic. Yes. Okay. And, and I, uh, those pictures, if you do find it, we'd love to see them. And I also love that you kept um, Terry's outfits. Yes. I want to wear it. <laughs> I really, I, I should probably dress my daughter up in it. Um, uh, Cause she would well, probably fit into it now. I, I like have to paint. ask, mm -hmm. um, has your sister, has your sister, has your daughter seen, um, Warlock or Hellraiser 3? No. Uh, Do you have plans he, of showing it to her? I probably should. I should have her, you know, when the pandemic's over and we're allowed to have people over, we should have like a, a, a ridiculous party. No, I think she doesn't even really know. <laughs> I don't think she's ever Googled me. Um, really? Friends have, which is sad. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I think she just saw not too long ago, um, Cheaper by the Dozen. Because it was oh. very like, kid friendly. She's 15 now. So, and she, oh. still, she still hasn't even seen Euphoria. At least she told oh. me she hasn't. You know. oh. I thought it was I think 15, she's ready for Hellraiser. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hellraiser, Hellraiser is fine. But Euphoria? Mm -mm. Oh, Euphoria yeah. is I intense. Mean, yeah, that's yeah that, that is intense. Stuff. I don't even like seeing it. Uh, like yeah. Stuff. Well, we are so, so yes. grateful that you took the time. Thank yes. you so much. Seriously, Paula, we are so you're excited. Awesome. You're... I'm so glad I can see you after Joey after all these years. I know. It's been a long time. Yeah, and, and we like, will. Like we and will I keep you, Matt. Yes. And I think I, I think, did I, if I haven't friend request you, I'm going to do it in a second. So I hope you'll accept. <laughs> She's busy. Seriously. Thank you so much. We will keep you posted on when the episodes air probably over the next few months and we'll let you Bye. know. And we're so excited. So thank you so much. Okay. Bye Paula. All right, take care. See ya. Okay. Bye. bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Happy Horror Time. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, and many other platforms. If you'd like to stay updated on the podcast, please like and follow our Happy Horror Time page on Facebook. You can also follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Happy Horror Time. To contact us, send us an email at happyhorrortime at gmail.com. We'd love to hear your movie recommendations or any horror stars you'd like us to interview. To support the podcast and gain access to our bonus episodes, please visit patreon.com slash happy horror time and sign up to be a patron. We try to release at least one bonus episode per month and really appreciate the support. Before we go, I just want to give a major shout out to our co-producer, Jacob Randall, without whom this podcast wouldn't be possible. Please check out his true crime podcast. It's called Crime of Your Life where he examines obscure and unsolved criminal cases and mysteries. It's incredibly engaging for both true crime lovers or just anyone who loves a good mystery. So we highly recommend Crime of Your Life. I'm Tim Murdoch. And I'm Matt Emmert. And, and thanks, thanks again, again for listening to Happy, Happy Horror, Horror Time. Time.